Thank you very much, uh, Damis uh, and Caroline, for inviting me to this uh, uh, workshop. Um, so I'm not a roboticist, so but I hope to trigger an uh, idea for uh, application of robotics. Well, and, and in fact, I'm, I'm, I'm going to work more in robotics. We just got a new grant uh, started. Um, so um, I, uh, I'm a, a professor at the UCL in the UCL Interaction Center, and I work in the area of uh, affective computing, so developing technology that uh, uh, can sense how people uh, feel and uh, use this information uh, accordingly. And um, most of my work is uh, in a real world application. And in this talk, I will just uh, uh, present uh, uh, two cases. One I've been working quite for a long time, and one way uh, just briefly uh, done initial works and is going to expand much more in uh, in, in uh, from from this year as we got uh, uh, funding for the next five years to work in this uh, in this area. Um, so, uh, as the title say, one important modality for me has been and it is a body. Uh, as a, a, a body, when I um, sense emotion in uh, uh, people, so technology that can read people or can uh, infer people affected states, uh, but also the body as uh, a, a tool for uh, uh, regulating, changing, acting upon uh, people emotional state. And indirectly, I also work on how the body matters in uh, in, in technology itself, embodiment. Uh, but I'll, I'll focus here uh, on this talk on recognizing uh, how, how technology can sense how people feel and to example of uh, real life application, why that matters and, and what may also mean for robotics. Uh, I start from uh, an area where I've been working for a long time through different uh, uh, grants and uh, presenting the work done so far, but it's also an area we are going to respond with the new uh, uh, program grant we got in collaboration uh, with Oxford uh, beyond chronic pain, but in, uh, in social care. But here we, I present the work done in the context of chronic pain. Uh, chronic pain. And what I'm looking here is a wearable technology. Uh, so uh, wearable that stop that sense how people feel and, and become either an extension of them or they could be felt as, as a coach, as a, a, an independent entity. The, the video you, show bef you saw before uh, showing a, a patient with a chronic pain engaging with uh, um, I don't know if I show the video. <laughs> Something happened. Okay. Uh, so here you see a person suffering from uh, chronic pain and engaging in very simple activity. And I'm sure you can see how the body is a powerful modality to infer the distress the person is going through uh, with simple, a, a very critical movement we do every day, just to sit down or to stretch forward to try to reach something across uh, a table or on a shelf. Um, this uh, uh, in, in chronic pain, um, people have difficulty engages with even this simple uh, movement, not because there is a, an injury or because there is an inflammation of the tissue, but just because our pain system is not working properly. So instead of protecting one us, uh, we continuously perceive pain, the pain is real, and it could be excruciating pain, just because the pain system is malfunctioning, and it could last for your, all your life, uh, generally quite a long time. So you have to live in, uh, with this continuous pain and trying to override that normal response to it of protecting yourself, because the movement you do is not the cause of pain, is not the danger. And this is very hard. So practically uh, many people with chronic pain struggle in perceiving even their body, their proprioceptive system, as in this quote from a patient, uh, is not working properly because of the fear of pain, the fear of uh, increased pain, the fear of danger. And they're not even conscious of that. 
often is the partner they say look you're becoming tense you're starting to move in a protective way you should stop and breathe and relax before you continue otherwise you just increase further your pain or it could be the physiotherapist because you lost the ability to know about your body and often you withdraw from many of your functional role working or even your role in, in your family just to avoid a movement. Um, so we have been working with uh, uh, patients and with clinicians in, uh, in this area to see how we can re-engage uh, people, uh, get people to re-engage with their body and remain uh, physically active. We've been developing different form of technology and one is that separate from you um, and here very simple as I say, it's so just a smartphone or a wearable you put on the part of the body that you struggle with to engage in movement and there are many other sensors integrated in it i'm not going to the uh, time is uh, short but this uh, one of the main functionality that this device has is to uh, uh, use the movement sensor in the phone and as you move your body through this movement sensor triggers sound. So your body become uh, sound, your movement becomes sound. This is a way to augment your, uh, your body, let's say, and to see if people can perceive better their body through their uh, sound. I'll just show uh, here an example of sonification. You can see very, very simple, a sequence of ascending and descending uh, scale. Uh, uh, so here we calibrate the uh, this range of sound uh, with the range of movement the person uh, wants to do. Position. The person um, can position, feel they can the do at the top of this scale and, position, and then going position. beyond that to a point that they want to challenge position, themselves. Set. That's great. So, so you can see pain behavior here, okay, protective, so what we call I'm protective not, behavior uh, to so just avoid you using particularly your back. Point, just and back. You'll see a little bit or less pain. So practically the, the movement triggered the sound is not vice versa. And what we see is that many people reported the sound as being a physiotherapist on their shoulder or some talk about their body, their extended body. So everybody has a different perception of this uh, identity, but they connect the sound is their body is uh, uh, because of the synchrony uh, between the movement and, and the sound itself. And they talk about having that sound as a way of perceiving their body, uh, perceiving of being capable when I arrive at the top of the, mon uh, the sound, I'm at the top of the mountain, and now I can it encourage me to go in the more difficult part, anxious part for me. But without the sound, you don't know. So um, those kind of interventions that we talk about sound, we have another one with breathing. Again, uh, uh, they talk about having this uh, companion with them that is breathing and remind them to breathe. So um, uh, they have, uh, on their initiative, a patient suggested that they could use this kind of technology, as you can see this person wearing it on the back, the phone, uh, to help them every day in everyday function. Here is a, a person using it during their laundry. Uh, other person, people went out even in the street with the sound to help them understand their body. So bringing this coach with them, they help them to and understand what they can do, to what extent they can enforce. People talk about this sound again as the body being able to help them to apply strategies that without the sound they're not able because they don't know what the body does. So a lot of possible uh, new way of intervention can be deployed and as in the previous talk, we, we saw the importance of becoming independent because at the moment, people living alone don't have that support. Uh, they have it only when they go to the clinic, but not in their life. 
people live with another, they depend on the other to, to help them engage with their movement. And here, the, the possibility of this device of uh, using it in different contexts and learning what their body can do. But they need this the device to become smart. They say they need this device as they need other people around them to understand that when they bend, they may be in pain, but they have to do it versus other time where they, they bend and they can do, but they're not aware they're able. So they need some a technology that has that ability to sense, but also the ability to understand and not patronizing, understand and support them and guiding them to uh, re-engage their body through this fluctuating um, uh, uh, condition. So we have been working uh, a lot in uh, developing technology that sense that pain behavior that uh, relate to anxiety. As I say, my main modality, not the only one that I use is movement and muscle activity, as you can see here. And we had an extended network sensor and also a reduced network sensor as we learn more of how many sensors we really need to detect cues that can indicate a person is uh, uh, scared in that moment in engaging in a movement. We are also developing different uh, technique of machine learning technique without going into uh, the, de the detail. Um, so to, to, to detect this moment and knowing when this coach, this agent, this extended body should start to provide that, that kind of support, that sense of awareness, or invite the person to, uh, to explore their body. Uh, you can see here when uh, a little bit how the system works. So when the body become red, the system is detecting uh, a moment of anxiety or protective behavior, maybe triggered by the muscle activity. Uh, you can see the head represent the, what the physiotherapy thing. So when you have head and body of the same color, the automatic system and the physiotherapist agree. Uh, what is interesting in this particular architecture that I show here, we have a good performance, but what is interesting for me is that it's not only giving an output, but it's also exploring the body, it's learning about the body. It's learning what is a, a body behavior that express pain, and that could be uh, quite interesting in, from an embodiment perspective. And, uh, and also from a coach perspective and providing, you know, it's not about a coach telling, oh, you are in pain now, but it's triggering those type of feedback and support that are useful here. For example, uh, we have uh, this color representing the importance of a particular body part as an indication of protective behavior. For example, we see in a patient here, the, the knee is a, a possibly person either working too much on the knee or avoiding it and, and how the, 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 the coach can bring the attention to that. So it's, it, it, when necessary, when the fear kick in or when the person is more relaxed, uh, engaging in this understanding of when the person is more receptive to learn about their body. Um, so this was one of the applications where I think that there is a lot of opportunity here going away from the typical rehabilitation technology, even in robots used just to drive and correct people's movement, but as an extension of their body with a certain agency and understanding of the uh, psychological state, uh, emotion uh, like anxiety, fear, uh, state like anxiety, fear of the, the emotional component of pain, as here there is no real damage in the body, uh, and engage the person in exploring what they can do rather than just exercising and correcting movement. So here the empathy, it's critical for uh, a, an effective rehabilitation. So this open new ways in engaging during everyday life rather than during the exercise section. The, the other project I want to very briefly to introduce is uh, uh, in the context of textile, uh, we have been working uh, a small project for some year, but now we have a, a new center started and also in the context of robotic where we are going to explore touch uh, and, uh, and textile. And uh, here I've been very much interested in understanding how people 
engage with textile. Uh, with Bruna Petreka here, we, uh, uh, she engaged with many uh, a designer, uh, textile designer, and look at how their body and movement engage with the textile to understand it, to enjoy it, and to create. And this is all a, a movement hands of body itself and touch on their skin. So what we are doing here, we are now understand, uh, try to explore using sensing technology, movement, and uh, EMG technologies. You can see here in this case, it's just on one arm. We are looking at how people touch and uh, uh, textile to understand it, to understand their property, but also to enjoy it, to, to, to enjoy their softness, their, their sense of coziness, their playfulness. So we are looking at very different level of uh, uh, experiences from very physical experience to very emotional experience and how they, the way they touch uh, provide indication of those experience they are going through. Um, the idea again is, uh, for example, uh, to uh, this data could be used for robots to think, to learn, to experience a style from that perspective. That could be about handling dedicated textile as they help somebody, or uh, also supporting the creative process in uh, in textile design and so on. And we are also engaged in a uh, um, textile circularity center that has been just funded where we want to know as before how extended body, a technology that become an extension of the body in, engage you in those sensorial exploration to, for example, avoid that fast buying of clothes that end up in, gar uh, in garbage uh, and engage in, in making choices that are, are more and uh, useful to your well-being and your satisfaction. Also understand textile itself to maintain it for longer, uh, to treat it in the real, uh, in the better way and maintaining for longer in the circularity, understanding how to upgrade it. So an extension of yourself and on the, that bring you into those experiences and get you to focus on those experiences rather than go uh, quickly away from it. Uh, here, just a very quick result, just by using EMG, just even just one, we see, we explore the different type of gesture people do. We can also see how we can detect the different, uh, uh, by using just the sensor, we can detect different level of experience. So when people are experiencing something that is really warm and cozy, uh, also, uh, smoothness uh, can be detected by the amount of uh, uh, um, uh, activity in your muscle as you touch it. Uh, again, people are not prescribed in the way they have to touch it as free. And we can see this across material, across people. And just using simple, at the moment, a statistical technique, we can see a possibility of getting insight on what the person is perceiving, uh, what the person is checking, and how the person is engaging in a longer time. That would be just not about, oh, let me see if it's soft, but oh, it's really soft. I, I, I love that. So here, interesting opportunity for again, having uh, learning from this gesture and transferring this gesture into robots, but also robots that are part of an extension of your body that uh, could, as a, as a, for example, a chatbot, uh, get you to think and reflect to those, uh, on those sensations uh, before you purchase or before, or as you, you learn how to maintain that textile uh, in your life. Or longer. And I finish here. Uh, thank you very much.